I'm so excited. Let's jump right into today's video because I have several Goodwill thrift flips for you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. If you like farmhouse decor on a budget, make sure you subscribe before you leave. That way you don't miss any of my future uploads. Okay guys, so all of these are so easy. That is what I love most about thrift flips. Half of the work is already done for you. So for this tobacco basket, I knew that all it needed was just a little bit of love. So the little spots that were kind of cracked and broken, I just kind of repaired. This one, I had to fully crack it to be able to glue that piece back down behind one of the weaves and then attach the top to that piece. So that was really the only piece that was really messed up that I had to glue together. Um, another little piece I just tucked, it was no big deal. And then I flipped it over and somebody must have been hanging it from that string so I just cut that off and then I went in my stash and pulled out this grapevine wreath from Dollar Tree as well as this lamb's ear garland that I got from Walmart and I just measured the length that I needed around my wreath and then I used my Gorilla hot glue to attach that um, greenery down to that wreath. Anytime you're gluing greenery down to a wreath, you always want to make sure that you're holding that in place until that hot glue dries because if not, then your greenery is going to want to pop up on you and then you're going to have to re-glue it, waste your glue. So just do as I say, not as I do because I'm always really super impatient and I just let go and then I have to re-glue it. So trust me when I tell you to just hold it down until it dries. Next, I take this hanging shelf from Dollar Tree. I kind of showed you how it hung with the little um, ring at the top and the string, but I'm going to use this for a sign in the middle of my wreath. So I take my transfer. I love this one. It says farmhouse-ish and it is a rustic dwelling without the actual farm, which I think most of us, um, most of us have. Next, once I uh, measured out how much space I needed on this sign, then I took my handy dandy DeWalt saw, I cut that down and painted it front and back with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I fuzzed my transfer after, after I took it off the backing sheet and then after I mixed up my black paste, then I went in with my squeegee and I just squeegeed that on, uh, making sure that it's an even coat if you do not like the distressed look, but I don't mind that so I'm not too much of a stickler. Um, I get it pretty good, but I'm not mad at it if it's not fully through the screen because to me it adds to the rustic charm, right? Now I get a lot of questions because sometimes the black does like to, um, you know, fade, not fade, bleed. And the way to combat that is make sure that your jar of paste is stirred up really well. You want to make sure that you smooth your transfer out really, really well before you squeegee on. And then when you squeegee your paste on, make sure you're not pressing too hard. You want to have a nice, even pressure, but you don't want to push too hard. So I hope that helps. And once that was dry and I pulled back the transfer, or once I pulled back the transfer and it was dry, and I was left with this amazing wording. Then I went in with my mini chip brush and my Waverly Antique Wax and I just dry brushed all the way around the edges as well as the front and the sides of the sign. Next, I glue it down in the middle of my wreath and then because this hanger was on the wrong side, now I could have put it up and down, but I thought that it just looked better, um, you know, long ways. So I just took a piece of jute, I doubled it up and then I hot glued it to the back, leaving a tiny space. And as you can see, this holds up super well. I've never had an issue with my jute hangers, so I think it's a great technique, but if you do have a sawtooth hanger on hand, then that's probably a better um, choice. <laughs> Next, I just glue my wreath down to the middle, and you guys, that was it. This probably took me about 20 to 30 minutes, and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. I'm just thinking of this up somewhere in my new home, and, and I'm just so excited. So if you guys are excited to come along on that journey with me, let me know in the comments down below. 
Okay, guys, I told you these were so easy. You could probably do this in your sleep. Um, I think that thrift flips are a perfect beginner project for those of you that are a little intimidating by a little intimidated by DIYing and you know I see in the comments like I could never do that but I think if you guys go thrifting it really helps you to do a project and not feel like you're not going to be able to complete it or do it because half of the work is already done and things like this all you have to do is just wipe it down give it a coat of paint um, maybe a little bit of dry brushing whatever your heart desires and you're done so if you guys are intimidated by DIYing but you really want to do it go to a thrift like a thrift store um, whatever you have near you and pick up something that all you have to do is put a coat of paint on it so i was rambling but all i did was glue that handle in place with some wood glue um, after i wiped it down i gave it a distressed coat of white waverly chalk paint and then last but not least again i went in with my mini chip brush and some antique wax i dry brushed all the way around and look how amazing this turned out you guys I feel like it looks like it was always like that or you know I feel like it looks genuinely weathered I don't know maybe I'm crazy let me know down in the comments Okay, friends, moving on to flip number three. Once again, super easy. All I did was take some acetone nail polish and some Q-tips. Now, if you don't have nails on like me, I have gel polish, so this would eat right at my nail polish, so that's why I'm using um, Q-tips, but you can use cotton balls. That would go much quicker, but I just used the um, Q-tips, and I took the wording right off the front of that. Next, I just pulled out that those leaves and berries. It, this was a bit tricky because it had a staple like right underneath of the pitcher. Now, I could have unscrewed that and undid it or, you know, pulled out the leaves that way, but it was just much easier to pull it out. And then I took my tin snips and I cut it the rest of the way and then tucked it in. Next, I took this greenery that I got from Amazon and... I, I tried to arrange it like 30 different ways and I just really didn't like the way that it looked. Now looking back, I wish that I would have stuck with that and then added the other greenery I had with maybe some other embellishments. I'm not too sure. But I ended up going with this little pick that I got from Walmart. I thought that it was super cute. Now it doesn't really go with my farmhouse decor. However, I do have another spot that this might could go or might go I should say <laughs> and so when I tried to put the pick in there the leaves were way too big so all I did was pull it out and just cut the leaves away now I tried to pull it off but then you'd have to pull the flower off and then pull the greenery or the leaves off and then add it, it was just too much I just cut it down and then I put it into the pitcher and kind of fluffed my flowers and greenery out then I went in with the boxwood that I also got from Walmart. I cut down a few of the picks and then I just kind of put them in there randomly to cover up any empty spots. Now this is a new way that I'm trying to cut my transfers. I always cut them in all the pieces and then I can't find them and it's just a mess. So I saw my friend do this and you guys, I think this is going to work amazing. So instead of cutting the backer sheet with the transfer you're just going to lift up the transfer and cut the transfer away from the rest of the pieces that way once you wash and dry it all you have to do is put it back on that big backing sheet with the rest of them and then you know where the rest of them are as well so once I cut that away and I fuzz my transfer and I fuzz it because I don't want it to stick to this, any non-porous surface like, you know, like this aluminum or whatever you'd like to call it, galvanized metal, um, 
these transfers will stick really, really well. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of fuzz on the back. That way, when you pull that up, it pulls up really nicely and you don't stretch or ruin your transfer. So once I transferred on my black, then I pull it up and look how amazing that looks. I really love the saying, the hay bud with the flowers. I believe this pick from Walmart was only 97 cents. Um, this sign was only $2.99 at Goodwill and you guys, it looks so high-end. I would pick this up at any high-end store um, and I would probably pay top dollar for it. So anyway, you guys, let me know down in the comments, would you have changed up the greenery? Would you have put anything different in there? Let me know. Okay friends, moving on to our last and final DIY of the day is this vintage chalkboard. Now originally I was thinking about this going in my girls room, but after looking at the stuff that I had, I ended up wanting to put this up myself. So all I did was wipe it down really well with a Lysol wipe and then I went in with my Dixie Belle Spanish Moss and I gave this a really nice coat. Now this only needed one coat. This paint went on so smooth. This old wood, I love painting on it because it really has no scratches, no dents. It's just so smooth to paint on and it's just satisfying. So anyway, the trick to getting in those little grooves is taking your paintbrush and just kind of pushing it in a swirling motion and then that will get in all those little grooves and then you're just gonna go back over it to make sure it's even. Once I had a nice coat on this and it was dry, then I went in with my chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I gave the old chalkboard a nice new coat. I am super impatient, so I hit it with my heat gun to make sure that it's good and dry before moving on to the next step. Okay guys, it's super windy here today, so if you hear any banging or anything like that, it's because it's so windy. I cannot help that, and I'm so sorry, but I just wanted to mention that I also made sure that the edges were super dry as well on the inside because I knew that once I laid down my transfer that it could potentially pick up that paint on the edge and make a mess so I just wanted to make sure that everything was good and dry. Now this is a super awkward shape. Um, the width isn't very wide so I was having trouble figuring out what I was going to put in the middle of this sign. Um, I literally spent 30 minutes trying to figure it out and this was the only thing that I could come up with. This is my March Club Couture transfer. It is the home transfer with the little um, windmill that you could replace the O with which is what I did. So I just cut up my transfer. I fuzzed the barn as well as the home and then I transferred on the barn with my white paste, pulled that up dried it then i transferred on the hme pulled that up dried it and then once again i transferred on the windmill pulled it up dried it and then last but not least to finish this off i took my mini chip brush and some white waverly chalk paint and i heavily dry brushed all of these all of these little details, I just love them so much that I wanted them to really stand out. So on the details, I went really heavy handed dry brushing and then on the inside and, you know, like the empty spaces, I went a little less heavy handed. So let me know in the comments. I know not a lot of you guys like dry brushing and I thought that my taste was going towards the more plain side, but I don't know you guys when I'm working and I'm, I'm just doing my thing. I grab for what I grab for. My eyes tell me what to do and I just go for it. So I thought it would be really fun to vote down in the comment section, which is your favorite project? Flip one, flip two, flip three or flip four. Um, you can name, you know, what the project is, say, you know, one, two, three, or four. Um, you know, as always, I can't pick a favorite, whatever 
the case may be. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your opinion. So let me know down in the comments. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure enjoyed making it for you and being here with you guys today. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and everything you do. I haven't really been uh, promoting my buy me a coffee. I don't know why, but if you guys like my work and want to support my channel i do have a buy me a coffee link down in this description box below however you don't have to do that you don't have to support me monetarily i appreciate you guys just being here you guys help me out in ways you'll never know and you can help your favorite creator out by just liking their video sharing it watching the ads to 30 seconds, clicking the ads. That's how we get paid. So if you guys want to help your favorite creators without, you know, monetarily helping them, there's many different ways you can help. So with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely amazing. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.